365 hustle. Baby, I do boss teams. Young seven out the seven, I be repping. I pull up anywhere. Spark me running over peons with my Nissan. I be scrapping like the Leon. That is breeding pedigree. Who the fuck? Hey, you guys. What up? It's your boy Tyson. Um, this video is not planned. I should be somewhere celebrating the release of my EP. By the way, you need to go catch that revision EP. Um, the remaster volume one. I added a few tracks, remixed some, um, and there are some tracks that, um, like I said, I added a few. They didn't make it, um, but I had the, you know, goal of dropping them when I dropped the original project. But this one is remastered, it's done professionally in a studio, and overall I like the way that it came out, so definitely go check out that. I'll be doing some advertisements for it later, and... <sighs> Thinking about doing like some local shows for it. I'm not sure. But at any rate, go check that out. Um, I should be somewhere celebrating that. <laughs> but I got to run to the grocery store. And I got a phone call this morning. And it's just been weighing on my mind heavy. Um, literally, I think it's like one. It's one. Twenty something now. And the last hour of my life has been, I woke up, got a phone call from my dad, and he said um, he had found, he needed me to go outside and check what the tire size of my car was. And there's this great video, I, I don't want to jump too far, so I'm going to try to stay on topic, but there's this great video by the content creator O. Steph Co., and it's called Don't Gatekeep Your Trauma. And the reason why I brought that up is in the video, she said, even if you personally in that moment are having a moment of self-deprecation, or she said something to the effect of this. This is how, let me say, this is how I processed it. Even if you are having a moment of self-deprecation where it's like, maybe I did overreact, or you know, you're not giving yourself enough balance or space to be offended at what somebody said or have PTSD from certain moments. Even if you didn't register it that way, and especially I think we can all relate to a time where we have vented and somebody said, oh, and I actually was just watching another great content creator, EJ Speaks. I was watching her um, video and um, it was uh, things that she thinks was tacky. And it was like when you're venting to somebody and then they're like, oh, girl, you think that's rough. Try getting cheated on and beat it on. And it's like, OK. This ain't about you. You asked me to confide in you. Why are you pushing against what I'm saying? But at any rate, to go back, and I do think that's tacky. But at any rate, to go back to what Steph Coast video was saying, it's basically saying don't gatekeep your trauma. You know, it's not fair to your mental health to tell yourself, oh, maybe I overreacted. Because at the end of the day, it's not about, or, or for anybody else to tell you that for that matter. Because at the end of the day, it's not about if you overreacted or if, if you think that or if they think that. It's about how your brain registered the trauma. And uh, just one example of this, I, don't, I, I, I speak about my life experiences sometimes on here. I don't get too personal and I don't do like the, the like, y'all are never gonna see me on here like crying, hopefully. <laughs> but um, I was having this conversation with my parents and um, We had like a four hour conversation, just me and them, excluding um, any of my siblings. And in this conversation, I said, this is the first time in three years that I have felt comfortable enough with y'all standing this close to me. We were all standing in the kitchen. Um, so it's, you know, that PTSD shit is it, real. You know what I'm saying? And the trauma, the way that your brain interprets it, it doesn't matter if the person you're talking to thinks it, it was important what happened to you or it was traumatizing what happened to you. It's the way your brain registered it. That's basically what Steph, uh, the video that Steph Co um, had and was saying because she inserted a video that was, you know, validating that stance. And then she went and talked about her experience with it. So at any rate, um, the reason why I'm saying all this is when we were on the phone, me and my dad, I was walking out there to show him the tire size. I, I not show him, but tell him what it was. I needed to look at it myself because I forgot. P2656517. So at any rate, he started talking about the windshield. For those who don't know, 
Um, yeah, I don't show my windshield in my videos because I know I did a, a couple of vlogs and I was in the car. But I mean, who just says, hey, look at my windshield. <laughs> so at any rate, my windshield has a crack in it. Um, a rock hit it on I-20. And no, I was not driving behind one of those trucks that has sediment coming off. It just, the rock had it out for me. So it just flew from there. I don't, I don't know. But at any rate, from there, weather and just overtime wear and tear, it has gotten worse and worse. And he was like, basically, um, I know we wasn't talking about it, but I found a price quote for your windows. And I was like, I worked some, oh, and he said he had worked some overtime and he wanted to um, get that taken care of. Cause you know, it could like burst out, like at, the, at this point where my windshield is at, it could burst out in front of me while I'm driving. So and he was like, I don't want that to happen. And I understand most parents don't want their kids to get ricocheted, um, I don't know, smacked with glass, broken glass. So I understand that. But again, as I said earlier in the video, your brain processes trauma differently. And it processes it in its own unique way. And literally, when he said that, I just started crying. I just started tearing up crying. Like I had to leave because um, I was outside and I'm not gonna cry in front of people. So I, I literally bolted to the room and I was like, okay, all right. And I was trying to get him off the phone. Um, and I'm gonna come back to why that's significant in a little bit if I can remember. <laughs> but since then, and ice cream, um, when I am stressed, sweets, and alcohol is my thing. So at any rate, I was like, okay. And then quiet is kept. I have moments like this all the time. Like even from dealing with the growing up in the household that I grew up in, like even watching something like my wife and kids, a happy family can trigger it. Certain episodes, certain moments, um, watching the parents and the kids re reconcile because we, I felt, never had a true moment of reconciliation, that can trigger me. You know, so it's different. It's very different random things. And even though it comes out of left field, I kind of already know in the back of my mind why I'm crying or why I'm about to tear up or why I'm about to do this. Um, so it's altered how I can enjoy even happy things. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with the, um, you know, the childhood that I grew up in. So at any rate... Um, I, you know, hurried up and got him off the phone and I was like, okay, but I have moments like this all the time. Um, it's, you know, nothing, right? I hop on Instagram and I see this post that is shared by one of the blog sites and it said, black parents normalize not telling your kids business. And then it talked about how it creates trust issues. And I'm going down the comments looking and I'm like, um, you know, people are saying, yeah, I still never forgave my parents for talking about the whooping they gave me. And, you know, that, you know, some of that stuff, you know, as black people, you know, when it trends, you know, we laugh at it in the center. But, you know, I think the, I think in all black households, you know what I'm saying, at least American, I'm pretty sure it's, you know, not above average, I guess I'm trying to say, to hear the terms. Oh, you don't have any business. You don't have any privacy. Um, this is my house. Da 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 da. This and the other, and it can feel like very dominating and very like like you're being talked down to, you know. And and don't get me wrong, children get out of line, and you have to put them back in check. But black parents, watch that. Watch that because the way that can be interpreted, especially when you're dealing with young kids who don't have the mental, you know strength yet to handle phrases like that the way that that internalizes the way that that can make them feel like shit feel like less than that's a real thing you know what i'm saying and then later on when they got trust issues they're not talking to you or when they're running away and you're calling your daughters fast because they're running away you're assuming they're running away for their boyfriend they just don't want to be up under your ass they don't want to be up under you because you talk shit about them and you say reckless shit and don't get me wrong, I understand black Americans in particular, we are the broken raising the broken. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to this community, um, we're not that fresh out of the word that rhymes with bravery. 
Like people like to act like it happened a long time ago. It hasn't even been a hundred years yet. So, and the effects of bravery, uh, sorry, the effects of bravery, you know what I'm saying, are definitely still here haunting me and my people. <laughs> so, with that being said, um, just be a little co more cognizant of that. And so, at first I saw that and I was like, yeah, okay, all right, I'll just keep going. And I had an idea to do this video when I seen that. But I was like, eh, I see this every day, right? Now, Instagram and Facebook are connected, so maybe the algorithm... Well, no, actually, I can't even blame the algorithm because what happened was a friend, well, Facebook friend of mine shared this. So after that happens, I'm like, I'm going to watch. I have the idea to do this video, but I'm like, let me see if I can pull myself up out of this. And so I turned on some EJ Speaks. Um, next, I was going to watch Nello Rose. I've been watching her for a good minute. She's pretty funny. Um, but... I turn on some EJ Speaks and I'm like, I still feel like I need to address this. So I'm like, if there's one more sign that pops up, I'm going to hop on video and just do a video. And so I'm on Facebook, um, you know, and um, one of my Facebook friends posts about um, or shares a post and it says, black kids trying to talk to their parents about the trauma that they faced growing up something to the effect of that and the dude is literally it's a black man doing like this and he's talking in the it's against the brick wall it's actually pretty funny and again like i said black people we always one thing about us and i think this girls across the board diasporically not just american but um black americans but one thing that we do is we um use comedy you know what i'm saying in place of um our pain so, and I think we, I think that comes back from, you know, days of bravery, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, how the Braves, the Braves had to, you know, sing songs and, and you know, um, make jokes and roast each other and just do whatever they could to make the time pass to make it feel like they weren't being brutalized, you know what I'm saying? Or to just forget about the brutalization for a moment, if, if at all possible. And I do feel like um, genetically, we've taken on a lot of that, you know, the, the past and the trauma. I don't know how y'all feel about, you know, like spirituality and stuff. But I do feel like genetics are not just like hereditary things as far as like the physical, but also the spiritual, you know, things that your parents have felt. And, you know, like I think that kind of not to get too deep into it because I want to stay. I, I don't want this to be any longer than 15 minutes of that. And I see we're approaching 13 now. But at any rate, basically, like, if you've ever been somewhere where it feels familiar, but you just cannot explain it. I sometimes feel like sometimes that episode of Deja Vu can be your ancestors. It may be um, your, your grandmother or your aunt. Maybe this is somewhere where they used to be or frequent or this is significant to them and it was genetically passed into you. And it's just something you can't explain. You know what I'm saying? Um, but at any rate, going back to... What I was saying. So I saw that post about the dude saying it's like talking to a brick wall about trauma that um, black American parents have um, and black parents in general have created. I do think that one can be applied across the board, diasporically and non-diasporically. Um, it's a lot of gaslighting that happens. Um, it's a lot of, well, you did, well, you did. And it's like, okay, if I'm the child and I need to stay in a child's place, the bulk of our dynamic is going to be contingent upon how you treat me first. Because I, I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? I came out of you, but I don't, and I think this concept of black children owing their parents shit has got to stop. Like, your child don't owe you shit. You are the one who decided to lay down and fuck and let, I'm trying to stop cussing. You decided to lay down and consummate. <clears throat> and it, I think for me, the entitlement really pisses me off because let's be honest, a lot of these black parents out now, y'all didn't plan on being black parents. Y'all were just having a night of, hell, I'm one of them. I am a, I am a oops baby. So, and once they, you know, found out they were having me, they went on ahead and rushed and got married. 
And that's a lot of black kids' stories. So you're acting or coming to me with this attitude of I owe you this and you owe me. And, and don't get me wrong on the tip that or on the topic of like childbirth and the things that black mothers go to and the black maternal. Um, I can't remember the word, but the rate of black women that die in childbirth versus others is astronomically different and higher. So I can acknowledge that part. But I'm just saying the basis of having a child, it is on you to foster your dynamic and your um, rapport with that child. You know, um, my father, one time he was having a conversation with somebody and um, that we both knew. And he had divulged this person that, you know, he just doesn't relate to me, which is weird because we both did music like he was going to be a big time. More than like, like Casey and JoJo, you know, he was going to be up there with them. You know, this is back in the 90s. Um, and then I was born and then he hung up his, you know, job or his career, his dream. And, you know, went and got a job. And maybe that plays into one of the reasons why we don't get along. So consciously he may feel a little, um, you know, like that wasn't what he was supposed to do. I don't know. But again, I ain't asked to be here, y'all. And now I'm here. Um, and he did, you know, get him a, get him a nine to five, get stuff started and support his family. And I'll never take that away from him. And he has my respect for that. Um, but he was talking to this person and he was saying that, you know, he just doesn't relate to me. And she, the person was listening and they were like, I don't understand why as a parent, he didn't think, let me gravitate towards him and figure out what he wants. You know what I'm saying? Or what he likes to do. and Because it can't always be about what they want to do as parents. You know what I'm saying? And I think that was one instance where that could have strengthened our relationship. Um, another instance. Um, damn, I just lost it. What was it? Oh, yeah. So there was one time, just for example. And it annoys, it kind of annoys me now because everybody does it now. Everybody has a Facebook marketplace, uh, you know food, restaurant type of setup. So basically I was 16 and at this time I um, ended up finishing out in online school. So I was trying to find like something to do or whatever. And my grandmother, I'm never, I'm not one of those black kids that's gonna feel bad for being spoiled. I, so you take that shit somewhere else. But my grandmother pretty much when she was alive, may she rest in peace. Um, she pretty much took care of like anything that me and my sister wanted when we were growing up. Like, and it was so bad. Like now looking back, if I had the cognizance that I have now, I, I wouldn't like, we would call her at 8 p.m. after she just got off work and she would come and take us to the store. And like, of course now I'm grown and that was selfish, but I'm a kid and all I see is I'm a kid and my grandmother's buying me stuff. That's it, that's all I see. So and I, when I when I say go buy a stuff, I mean like spend two hundred dollars at the grocery store and then come back and do it again in two weeks. Like she she really did look out for us to her detriment sometimes. Um, and I, I'm gonna be honest, one thing, one gruesome, I wanna say it feels gruesome, but it, it feels gruesome but truesome. Thought that I had is, and I shared this with them one time. I said, if she never died. I was mad at the way she died and I'm mad at the way she passed and I felt that it was too early. But if she did never die, I probably would have never gotten a job. Like I didn't get a job till I was 18. I didn't get a license till I was 18. I didn't have a reason to. Like I would call her, she would get my stuff. And then as far as like me as a child, I didn't play video games. I didn't do anything that was too, if I had a phone and a laptop and a TV, I was good. So I didn't need like, I didn't have a need to get a job basically. Until it's like, okay, you're 18, you need to start transitioning out the house, blah, blah, blah. But besides that, I didn't have a need to get a job. So, um, nonetheless, I was 16 and um, we were talking about um, like maybe doing now, basically, when people are on like marketplace selling their like frozen foods or our foods ready to go that you just put in the oven, like things like that. We were basically talking about, about, about starting something like that. And I remember in the conversation, I just felt like my parents were being so dismissive and kind of like shooting down stuff. And it's like, okay, 
if this is what, what if this is not what we can do, something that black parents can do is okay, we can't do this. Let's brainstorm on this. Let's figure out how to do this. And I think that is something that dawned on me when me and my parents had that three hour conversation or four hour conversation that one night. There wasn't a lot of not even compromise, but there wasn't a lot of, okay, Tyson, we can't do that. Let's do this instead. It was almost like just hitting a dead end road. And I think over the years, I internalized that as, okay, well, you don't care. And to be honest, still, even now at me being 23, it still feels like you don't care. Because if you just give me a no, even if you give me the reasons why, okay, can you give me something to work with? Okay, what can we do instead? You know, something like that, some type of follow through. Um, I think that's an area that some black parents could work better on. Um, so those are just two examples I want to go by. And like I said, when I saw that third post, I was like, okay, I need to talk about this. Um, yeah, I didn't intend on this being this damn long. I thought it was going to be pretty short. Sorry about that. But I just wanted to kind of come here and get the perspective of the child um, that is now kind of in grown years and has matured and kind of internalized stuff and come up with their own understanding of it using words. And um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So just, just be mindful of that. Any black parents watching or parents to be, or parents just in general, you know what I'm saying? It's not about what you, it's not always about your intent. Sometimes the impact highly erodes over the intent. So, with that being said, um, y'all go check out the EP. is out. Um, I'm going to go do some uh, ad placements and get it. I'm advertised on some sites. I might do an Instagram ad. And, um, yeah, I need to go to the grocery store first, but I'm going to do all that when I get back. But, yeah, I'm going to go make my little collagen and protein shake so I can go shopping so I don't go shopping hungry. Because y'all know if you go shopping hungry, bitch, you finna buy the whole store. <laughs> So with that being said, um, thank y'all for watching the video. Hopefully y'all made it all the way through. And I will get back to y'all on my next video. I don't, kind of in lieu of how to process doing content, I think I'm going to switch more over to voice only content for now. So, um, yeah. But at any rate, y'all like, comment, and subscribe if you felt anything that I was saying in this video. I'll give it to y'all on the next one, and y'all go check out Revision to EP Volume 1 Remastered. Bye. All right, you guys. Um, future ties in here. I forgot to tie in the relevance of why the phone call with my father made me emotional. So, I had been in a car wreck, my very first car wreck, in 2018 of August. And the reason why that phone call kind of stirred me up a little bit is... In this phone, or not phone, in this accident, it was 10 seconds of me applying the brake and I still ended up hitting the person. And due to quick thinking, I'm glad I had this thought because if I had just hit her straight on, she had a kid in the back and it actually turned out it was a coworker sister of mine that I um, hit. But nonetheless, she had a kid right here in this seat and then there's the middle in this one. Um, so kid was on the left side. Thank God that I turned the wheel right so at least we hit like this or like this. So um, the kid was fine. She was fine. But um, I looked to my left. I saw I didn't have a, you know, way to merge um, or even to be able to get over into the left turning lane. And I looked to my right. It was blocked. It was like six or seven o'clock. So traffic is still um, heavy on Washington Road at that time in Augusta. So at any rate, um one thing that I've kind of I don't know if I've ever addressed it openly with my father but one thing that annoyed me about that situation was I brought up to him because he was still working on my vehicle back then I brought up to him hey dad I and I didn't I look y'all know me I get there with you a little bit of sass that, that's me you know what I'm saying when need be but I've learned over the years, that's not always going to be the most productive way to get what you want out of somebody. So I didn't come with any malice or any type of you, 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 you. I didn't just come up to him and nigga, you ain't fixed them brake pads. Da, 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 da. Like, nah, I didn't do all that. I literally said, hey, dad, the brakes are still squeaking. 
and y'all know how cars work it could be a number of things you can think it's one problem then it turns out to be three other problems or vice versa you could think it's three problems and just one problem one part replaces or fixes three different problems you're having in the car they're wired different <laughs> you know what i'm saying so same way you know you could be having um some issues and you take medicine and you might be having heartburn and a stomach ache and it cures both you know that one medicine cures both so you know cars are similar in that way um they're as complex as the human body and it makes sense because they're made by humans at least for now <laughs> so at any rate um with that being said i just said hey the brake pads they're not working his response to that or they're still squeaking something's still going on with the truck his response to that was well if it's not working then you can take it to your uncle zach so to relay that to what made me emotional about the phone call is basically i wish that that care of you know i work some overtime because my parents like to go on vacations they like to do other things that overtime that he got could have been spent somewhere else but he's spending some of it on this windshield i wish that that same care and having me in mind i wish i could have seen more of that growing up and that's not to say it wasn't there parents don't always vocalize the sacrifices that they make for us as kids i understand that but if all I see is arguing, 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 and this is actually one thing that I brought up in our, you know, trifold conversation with me, my mom, and my dad. I said, I know that you feel there are just some places where kids don't belong in conversations. However, being that we were arguing all the time, you could, explaining more or, or letting me in on something, it would have been more helpful. You know what I'm saying? To at least digest why I'm getting a no or whatever the situation is or for it to make sense in my mind. Because I was a pretty mature child um, to the point to where and to I understand that some of the stuff they shielded me from was because I'll take it on and think personally I did something or it's my fault. You know what I'm saying? So, um, like, I found out a family member had an addiction and my mom did not tell me because even though it was kind of flat in your face now that I think about it, um, but she didn't tell me because she didn't want me to take on the mental responsibility and anguish that, oh, this is my fault. I need to help them. I need to da-da-da-da-da because I would be that type of child growing up. And I'm still shaking those ways now. Now, at this point, it's called what I call bird, broken bird syndrome. Um, I will help people who don't even want to help them fucking selves. So I'm working on not doing that. But... Yeah, sorry. That was my long winter way of just tying in why the phone call made me so emotional. I just realized I forgot to include that earlier when I was getting ready. So with that being said, y'all, let me know down below if y'all can relate, if there's any stories that um, y'all can remember Charles' parents that kind of center around the trauma that you have nowadays. Um, have you ever tried to talk to your parents about it? You know what I'm saying? Um, did, how was it? Did they receive it? You know, sometimes when people get older, they come to terms with stuff and they're able to even look and see, you know what, I probably shouldn't have did that. You know, and they did apologize in that conversation that we had, that four hour conversation. My parents did apologize for some of the things that they've done and it helped to hear them. But also one thing that I think black parents need to be mindful of is you're not promised tomorrow. And if you give me an apology for something that you did three years ago, So, at any rate, um, that's all. I'm going to go in this store, and then I got to go help a roommate out with the situation. But at any rate, I will get back to y'all on the next video. Peace.